Hello and welcome to this TaxCalc training video. In this video we'll be looking at the application settings within the administration section of the program. We consider this more of a power user video. Within this video we will be going through the advanced customization options for each section and module of the software. We'll tailor some of the practice manager settings as well as tasks and work statuses. We'll also adjust a few things within tax return production such as default payment nominees and the computation management. In accounts production, we'll customize the default chart of accounts, set default notes, and take a brief look at PDF encryption. All of the settings can be accessed through the admin center option on the left. We can also go through the help menu, then click on application settings. To adjust one of these options, just double click. We'll start with Practice Manager. There are a few things we can tailor, such as startup options. We'll leave them as default. Login Password Setup. Hopefully by this point, we have set up our own user and assigned a password. Mail Merge. We've seen in a previous video for creating template letters for clients, there's an option for salutation, which selects the salutation we want to use. First name, title and surname, full name, and title and full name. Work item status allows us to change the job stages for each type. We've got accounts status and we can see the list of work statuses provided with the software. We can also create our own statuses. If there's another step we wish to record, such as getting information or books from the client, we can do that. This is the same for tax, VAT and company form work statuses. Just go in and update by creating a new one. Under Client and Non-Client Activity Types, we see the tasks assigned to existing work in the system, like tax return work. We can also manage tasks for work outside the system, such as payroll, bookkeeping, admin, etc. If there's another task type we'd like to create, we simply click on Create Type and enter a name. Then we can filter our tasks by that task type. We recommend enabling automatic task updates and automatically mark tasks as complete. This is normally defaulted to notify me when a task can be marked as complete. Then, when we complete work in the software, it'll automatically update the tasks. It'll also offer to create the next type of work for us. If we've completed a tax return for a certain year, it'll create the next one automatically. In Report Options, we can select the options we want to include in Report Manager. If we want to remove reports that shouldn't be viewed, add them back to the left-hand column. This can be done by selecting the report and clicking Remove. Continuing through to Services Offered, when we're onboarding a client, we're given the option to record the services they're taking from your practice. There's a standard set, but if you would like to create additional services, we can add them to the list here. In Client Consent, you can create additional consent types and methods for consent collection for the General Data Protection Regulations, or GDPR. You can enter your Data Protection Registration Number here, which also verifies your AML Identity Check. Datamine handles the filters we create throughout the system. In a previous video, we created a filter for March Year End. We can see that listed here. Finally we have custom fields. This allows us to create our own fully customizable database fields in the client record. To create an additional field, click the Create Field button and select which field it would be related to. We'll create one here, for example, Passport Number. This would be for individuals only. We can set the client record page we want this to appear under, in this case, the Contact Information page. Now we'll click Save. We can see that's updated the client record. When we go into the contact information page, we've got a new option for passport number. Let's go back into options. Now we'll tailor the tax return production module. This stores our central filing credentials. When you come to file a return, it picks up the details from this section. HMRC APIs receive information from HMRC systems. 
This manages the stored tokens that authorize the transfer of client information from HMRC. Printing preferences. What do you want to mark when you print a return? By default, the system asks whether to update the status each time we print a return. We recommend the top option, which sets the status to update automatically. Auto population of nominee details automatically enters bank and nominee details into new returns. When clients have repayments, that will automatically apply. Then, where do we want the repayments to go? Directly to the nominee by default, or to set off against future tax liabilities? In limited company CT600s, we can set the computations to show nothing, the name of the firm only, or the name and address of the firm. Managing external tax return files isn't really applicable. Our guidance is that all tax returns should be stored within the database. Now we'll look at accounts production and the options here. Most of this is setting default standards and formats for the accounts production reports. Auto population allows you to choose which accountant's information is to be displayed. Then there are options for firm details, whether the word unaudited will be shown in the accounts, the positioning of the initial box on the cover page, and margin sizes. If these accounts are being bound, we may want to indent the margin a little more. We can tailor the chart of accounts. We'll enter the limited company one here. If we're dealing with quite a few businesses who have online sales, trades, or online shops, we might want to set something up. If it's a commonly used code, we can tick it as a favorite, so we can apply this faster when posting in accounts production. We can choose to only show favorite codes by default. If we wanted to set up a list of codes for limited company postings, we can only show those by default too, which could help prevent user error. The report terms are used for balance sheet terms, etc. We can edit the defaults. If there's a particular wording for our tangible assets note, we can set up that here. You can tailor the default notes in the system. Again, we'll look at the limited company options. Lots of notes and disclosures that can be adjusted here. Other settings include show working paper reference column on audit trail and nominal ledger and show user initials on audit trail and nominal ledger. This shows who's posted certain things under the reports. We can add in variance columns automatically, as well as when you create the reports. Whatever's preferable to your working style. The online filing company's house presenter ID and authentication codes are stored here by default. Adjust those if needed. Most of that information is set when you first set up the software. If we need to adjust it afterwards, we go into those sections. PDF encryption allows a default password to be automatically assigned to clients when they receive PDF tax returns and accounts. The client will need to enter the password in order to open the PDF. A common option is client's national insurance number. If we set that, the client will need to type in their national insurance number to view their documents. We include these options and recommend not sending emails containing sensitive information without encryption due to compliance requirements. That covers the advanced settings options. I hope it's been useful to go through some of the advanced customization options in the software. If you have any questions or want to find out more, please go to our knowledge base or contact our support team. To view other videos on the TaxCalc software, click the links above and below. Thank you.